So, where does weak duality come from? So, suppose now let us say let x star be, so I will call this problem p, problem p, okay. Let x star be an optimal solution of p. And optimal solution of let x star be an optimal solution of p and now let us look at lambda of x star comma this comma this ok. So, this is equal to f of x star plus all this. i going from 1 to m for the inequality constraints and j going from 1 to p for the equality constraints. Now, what is it that you can observe here? So, if you look at this, this term here, these two terms, what can one say about these? Well, x star is an optimal solution of p, ok. If it is an optimal solution of p, then it has to at, it, at the very least it has to be feasible, which means that j of x star has to be equal to 0 which means this term is actually 0 ok. All these, these guys, this term here is actually 0 ok. All right. What about this term here? What about g i of x star? Well, g i of x star being again x star being feasible, it means that this guy is less than equal to 0 all right. Now, if this guy is less than equal to 0, then uh, so, we have that then that f of x star is greater than or equal to lambda i times something that is less than or equal to 0. Now, I have not yet said anything about lambda i itself ok. I have not told you that lambda i should be greater than or equal to 0 or anything like that. We did put lambda i greater than or equal to 0 in, in this optimization here when we were defining the dual problem. So, let us let us let us go ahead with that let us. So, suppose we restrict lambda i to be greater than or equal to 0 for all i equal to 1 to m. Then in that case, what would we get? Then we would get that this here okay, is, is less than or equal to f of x star. All right. We would get that this is actually less than. So this this quantity here is less than or equal to f of x star. Why? Because this this is less than or equal to zero. This is uh, 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 this is less than or equal because this that uh, these the gi's are actually less than or equal to zero, and these terms have disappeared. Okay. So let let us let us play around with this in a different sort of way. So suppose so so let suppose x star is the optimal solution of p. All right. Now, if and this is my uh, this is my uh, this is the value of my Lagrangian. Now, remember d of uh, remember that d of lambda comma theta is actually the infimum of the Lagrangian. So, d of lambda comma theta is therefore always greater than or equal to L of x star comma lambda comma theta all right. So, so d of lambda comma theta is greater than or equal to L of x star comma lambda comma theta right. So, if this is oh sorry my mistake here. So, d of lambda comma theta. So, d of lambda comma theta is is the infimum of the Lagrangian. So, if it is in it is the infimum of the Lagrangian, it follows that d of lambda comma theta is always less than or equal to L of x star comma lambda comma theta. 
and this holds for all lambda for all lambda and for all theta. This is just I do not even need to restrict my sign here. Okay, this holds for all lambda and all theta right. Now, what does this mean? And this it is this quantity L of lambda x star comma lambda comma theta was itself less than equal to f of x star. So, for and this and in getting to this inequality we needed that lambda is greater than equal to 0 and theta and theta is in R, R R p. So, for when lambda is greater than equal to 0 and theta and for any theta we all we have that d of uh, d of lambda comma theta is less than equal to f, f of x star. So, this is true for all lambda greater than equal to 0 and all theta and, theta and all vectors theta. What does this mean? You look back here then again at this optimization. What is this optimization? Well, it has a maximization of d of lambda comma theta over precisely the lambdas and thetas that are mentioned here. So, what does this mean? It means then that the maximization of d of lambda comma theta over lambda greater than equal to 0 comma any and any theta also has value less than equal to f of x star. And now, what is what is this f of x star here? Remember x star x star was an optimal solution of p right. It was an optimal solution of p. So, this is in fact the optimal value. So, this here is an optimal value of p optimal value of p and what is the one on the left hand side let us call this problem d the one on the left hand side is simply the optimal value of d. And what have we got here then? We have got that the optimal value of the dual is less than equal to the optimal value of the primal. So, what, so this, this statement here is nothing but the statement of weak duality. So, what, what, what does this mean? To, to summarize, you can take any optimization problem like this, you write its Lagrangian. Lagrangian is formed by, by taking a linear of the objective and a linear combination of its cons, of the constraints. Then for the constraints that are, that are inequality constraints, you, you, you restrict the multipliers, the Lagrange multipliers here to be greater than or equal to 0. For the constraints that are equality constraints, you do not need to have any such restriction. Then you look at the least possible value of the Lagrangian over the entire space. Define that as d of lambda comma theta and then maximize that d of lambda comma theta over the Lagrange multipliers the way you have restricted the Lagrange multipliers. Lambda to be greater than or equal to 0 and theta and uh, theta can be anything. In that case what and then what do we get? we get that the the optimal value of of this this is what we call the dual problem you call this the dual problem you call this the primal problem okay the optimal what we get is weak duality so the optimal value of the of the dual problem is always less than or equal to the optimal value of the primal all right okay so now i will show you now that actually what uh, what you uh, 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 what you found uh, calculated as the dual of a linear program in fact appears as a special case of this. So, that is not very hard to see. So, let us let us just go go through this. So, so look at consider our a linear program in standard form C transpose x A x equal to b and x greater than equal to 0. Now, I am going to create a Lagrange, Lagrangian of this lambda of, of L of x lambda uh, comma comma theta. Now, uh, let us be careful here lambda corresponds to the inequality constraints. So, that is what is going to, uh, so lambda is going to multiply my x and theta corresponds to the equality constraints. So, theta is going to multiply my a x a x minus a x equal to b. 
and since we want it in the in the form that we had for for the optimization problem on the previous page so what i'll write i'll write this as ax minus b equal to 0 okay so this is now uh, so my lagrangian therefore is c transpose x c transpose x plus theta transpose ax minus b now if you go back here i wrote this uh, this problem with inequality constraints only since now but now i am going to allow for equality constraints here in uh, sorry i am going to allow um, uh, sorry i wrote this problem with less than equal to constraints here the uh, so if you go back to this problem uh, this this problem has been written with less than equal to type constraints whereas here my constraints are greater than equal to type of constraint so i i can effectively just multiply both sides by minus 1 and that, and that would uh, that would flip the flip the direction of the inequality uh, of the constraint alternatively i can what i need to do is just compensate for that in the definition of my lagrangian itself so this is now my lagrangian now let me write the dual function the dual function which is d of lambda comma theta that is the infimum of the Lagrangian over the entire space. Now if you look at the Lagrangian function as a function of x if you look at this as a function of x this is clearly a linear function in x okay for, 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 for each fixed lambda and theta this is a linear function in x. And what you are doing here is you are taking the infimum of this linear function over this entire space. Now a linear function uh, 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 if you minimize this over in an unconstrained without any constraints then you would uh, you would get an you uh, the, uh, the, the optimal value is going to be minus infinity except in the case when the coefficients of the linear function are actually uh, are, uh, are actually 0. The coefficients in if the coefficients involved are 0 then the linear function would evaluate to something that is just a constant. So now to do that to, to evaluate this more, uh, more clearly let me le, let us just put uh, gather together the coefficients of x. So let us write this L of x comma lambda comma theta in this sort of way C minus A transpose theta minus lambda, the whole thing transpose or sorry E C plus this, the whole thing transpose X, and then there is a and then I am left with a minus theta transpose B. Okay, all right. So now, if I then if I take the if I take the def, if I take the infimum of the Lagrangian, then that tells me that d of lambda comma theta should be equal to one of these. So it's equal to either minus theta transpose b if c plus a transpose theta minus lambda is exactly equal to 0 and otherwise it is minus infinity. So, whenever this is not equal to 0 you can choose a suitable x to drive the value down to minus infinity all right. So, it is equal to some real value which is which is minus theta transpose b for for x uh, for, uh, for those uh, for uh, so long as theta and lambda satisfy this equation otherwise it is equal to minus infinity right. So, now if I am looking if I now look to maximize d of lambda comma theta remember now I need to do this over lambda greater than equal to 0 and over all theta then what is where would my maximum be attained well my maximum cannot be at uh, cannot be minus infinity obviously it is since it is a maximum. So, my maximum is going to be attained over this 
this region. What do you mean by this? What do I mean by this region? I am looking for the maximum over these, over the lambda comma theta such that they satisfy this, right? So effectively, my, my the my, the maximum is going to be equal. This is going to be equal to maximize minus of theta transpose b subject to c plus a transpose theta minus lambda equal to 0, lambda greater than equal to 0 and any theta. Now, if you play around with this a little bit, what what do you realize? If you play around this with, a, uh, if you play around this, uh, play, uh, play around this with a, a little bit, you realize that, well, my lambda does not appear in the objective at all. I can absorb this the fact that lambda is greater than equal to 0 and there is a minus lambda here, then it is simply that the lambda is simply appearing here as a as a slack variable. So, effectively this, this constraint here can be written in this form that I can simply write this as maximum maximizing minus theta transpose b c plus a trans was theta greater than equal to 0 and I am my theta is unrestricted. So, my lambda can plays no role lambda can be removed from this by just observing that these two inequal these two equations here are effectively saying c plus a transpose theta equals lambda and lambda is greater than equal to 0 right. So, it is maximizing maximizing this bit. So, let I can simplify this even further and write this more neatly. So, I can I can say maximize minus of theta transpose b c. Uh, so, I will write this in the in a following way I can c is greater than or equal to negative of a transpose theta ok. So, now and I am maximizing over theta. Now, notice how uh, something that we can do. Since theta does not uh, is sign is has no sign constraints, maximizing this particular thing, this particular minus theta transpose b subject to c greater than equal to minus a transpose theta. This, this, this can be uh, this uh, since theta has no sign constraints, I can absorb, I can just replace theta by minus theta. And and the optimization problem would remain, uh, uh, value would remain, uh, should remain the same. Or alternatively, I I uh, I take this minus sign minus. I just define theta dash as minus theta, or define y as minus theta here. If I just let y equal to minus theta, then what I what I have is are familiar optimize, uh, familiar form of the dual which is b is maximize b transpose y subject to a transpose y less than equal to c okay i'm not multi remember i'm not multiplying anything by a negative sign i'm just changing my notation i'm uh, i'm doing a change of variables i'm expressing y as uh, as uh, as my uh, i'm expressing minus theta as y and and then substituting and that gives me this and this is actually nothing but the familiar dual problem of this particular problem so this was our primal and this is what we had learnt as as the dual okay so if you work with the lagrangian and you follow this uh, follow the uh, follow the routine that i mentioned in the pre on the previous slide if I, you get back the dual okay so what this does is this 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 way of this this entire whatever is there here right on the uh, mention that is mentioned here which is that you define the lagrangian you then define the dual function by taking the infimum of the lagrangian over the whole space and then and then take the then maximize the dual function subject to o with uh, with constraints on the lagrange multipliers if you if you do all of that that actually gives you if you do that for a linear program that gives you back the dual that we had defined earlier so this way of uh, of of defining the dual is now a, is is a way of is basically generalizing the dual, duality 
formulation of for linear programming to problems that are potentially non-linear. Okay. So, this is our going to be our vehicle for analyzing the uh, for talking of duality for uh, duality for uh, convex optimization. Okay. I should also tell you that there is um, uh, there is another there is another connection here let me mention that. So, there is another uh, a the word dual as I is one that has been used by multiple people uh, in in different senses. So, there is another dual what is which is called the conjugate dual or conjugate dual or what is also called the Finchel dual thanks to Werner Finchel. Okay. So, what is this dual? This dual is of a, the conjugate the conjugate dual of a function f okay. f is denoted in of a function f it is denoted as f star. So, f star of y is is defined in this way it is defined as the supremum over all x of supremum over all x of y transpose x minus f x. Okay. So, you what you do is you take you subtract from f uh, subtract or rather subtract f from a linear function whose slope is is the parameter that you control the slope here is y. So, you subtract f from this linear function and you look at the maximum value of that you can get with a certain slope. So, what is the maximum departure of this function from a linear function? and study that as a function of the slope that that if you you look at that as a function of the slope that quantity is what's called gives you is what is called a dual function now the dual function just like your just like d is uh, has uh, the uh, d was always concave then this this f star is always convex right and uh, so, so now what is the connection between between d and uh, d and f star? Well, there is there is a connection in the following sense that you can you can see that this here as a uh, uh, what you are what you are taking the supremum of has has a resemblance to the Lagrangian in some way as a resemblance to the Lagrangian. So. So it is, uh, it is in, it is, it is sort of closely related, um, closely related to the, to a, to an optimization, uh, to a certain type of optimization problem, and that optimization problem is basically, you can say, consider, you can consider the the optimization problem where you are minimizing f. the uh, if you if you so if you are minimizing f subject to say x greater than equal to 0 all right so in that case you the kind of the kind of uh, quantity you would encounter would end up becoming something like this but this is just to just to for you to mention uh, for you to know there is no um, the uh, the uh, uh, this 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 is another notion of the dual and it should not be confusing this with the lagrange with the lagrange dual all right okay. so what we will be working with is the lagrange dual okay. 